Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for the honor of being here to close this debate. Thank you so much to colleagues on both sides of the debate who've made such eloquent speeches, which were a real uh, joy to listen to, beginning uh, with the first two speeches and continuing all the way through to the end. I thought I was being interrupted to start with there. That's, uh, that's good. Uh, a real joy uh, to close the debate. Um, let me take you back to one of the first and oldest stories in the whole human story, which sets the contrast between fear and love in leadership. So I'm taking you back about 3,000 years uh, to a place called Shechem, to a story told in the Bible from uh, 2000 BC about a king called Rehoboam. It's not the best known story in the Bible, but it's one of my favorites, and it's worth reading later. You can find it in the book of Samuel. Rehoboam is the son of King Solomon, and he inherits a kingdom as a relatively young man, and uh, the people come to him in the place called Shechem, and they say, we want you as the king to ease our burdens, to lighten our load. Electorates and countries have been saying that to leaders ever since. Rehoboam takes two sets of contrasting advice in the story. The first advice he takes is from the elders who've advised his father Solomon for the whole of his reign. What shall I do? They say to him, be a servant today to this people, lighten their burdens, and they will serve you and love you all your days. He then turns to the second group, the young men with whom he's grown up, who can't wait to get their hands on power. And they advise him to choose the route of fear. They say to him, say to the people, my little finger is thicker than my father's loins. I will increase your burdens, not diminish them, and you will serve me. My father chastised you with whips, and I will chastise you with scorpions. Rehoboam faces the dilemma, will he choose love and be a servant leader to the people, or will he choose fear? He chooses the path of fear. Ten of the twelve tribes of Israel rebel. There is never again a kingdom the size of David and Solomon's kingdom, not for hundreds and hundreds of years. And the ancient kingdoms, once they separate, are overrun by the superpowers around them and disaster strikes for centuries because the king chose fear over love as a motivation. Every person in this room, I would imagine, and every member of this house is here because you are preparing to exercise leadership in some way. A key factor in the exercise of leadership is how to motivate people. Whether you might be leading a bank or a company or a school or a church or one day perhaps a whole country, whether you're heading up an international brand or a small startup, how you motivate people will be a key to the effectiveness of your leadership. What will bring the most lasting change in how you choose to deal with people? How will you build loyalty and inspire sacrifice and help people work together and bring out the best in the team? I think I want to say to you, in contrast uh, to the proposers of the motion, be very afraid to be a leader who depends on fear. Be very afraid to be a leader who depends on fear. 
choose love. And the accompanying virtues of listening and trust and respect, relationships and freedom. Let me offer you uh, examples of change from three of the fields in which I work. The first is climate change, the greatest existential threat to humankind at the present time. The House of Lords Select Committee uh, on Climate, of which I'm privileged to be a member, recently published a report on behavior change and its relationship to the pathway to net zero. We discovered that around 60% of the change that is needed towards net zero depends on some aspects of people changing their behavior. So the study of how people are motivated to change behavior is really important. Many studies have found that fear is not enough. Ramping up the fear of the consequences of the earth heating, terrible though that is, does not produce behavioral change. It increases anxiety to a terrible degree, but it doesn't produce the change that's needed. What does motivate people for change is building a more positive vision of the future, showing people how they can make a difference, and enlisting everyone to be part of the same team. It's the positive vision, and that, I think, is the secret of the great leaders we've heard a great deal about tonight, Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King, Gandhi, and others. Second field in which I work is a little, is the ethics of artificial intelligence. There's been a great deal in the news of late which has increased the fear of what will happen in the future as AI develops, the consequences of unrestrained technology. Now, I think those warnings need to be given, they're wise, but the robot apocalypse on its own shuts down creativity and development uh, through fear. And the tremendous benefits of AI in medicine, uh, in the workplace, in the home, need all the time a more positive vision of the future. It's love, not fear, which brings positive change in the world and which will enable the human AI partnerships in every field which can bring a really significant change in human well-being. And finally, my third field, uh, and briefly, is of course communication about God, which is my core business as a Christian minister. Love and fear have both played their part, as was referred to in uh, Christian preaching. There was a time when the fear of hell and damnation was deployed widely by preachers, preying on the anxieties of their listeners. Such preaching, thankfully now, is only rarely to be found Instead, the preacher appeals to a more positive vision, to love, to grace, to the hope of a better world. Why might this be better? And this is where the love and fear dichotomy takes us beyond leadership and beyond change to actually the core of what it means to be human and the core of who we are as people. The Christian witness uh, to the high calling of what it means to be human is that Almighty God desires more than obedience from humanity, but desires relationship and love. More than obedient slaves who fear his wrath, but friends and children and partners in reshaping the world. Respect has its place. The fear of the Lord is indeed the beginning of wisdom, as we have heard. But the greatest and deepest path to change is and always will be the way of love. So I appeal to you, therefore, to take actually the road less traveled. My experience of the world is that fear is common. Love is rare. The way to lead 
is the way of love. Thank you.